You know, I think one of the things that's funny about real estate investing as well is there's always so much news or so many, you know, people trying to make predictions about what the market's going to do. And I get it that 2008 has happened, you know, in the not so recent past. So some uh, preparedness or speculation is probably inevitable. But for the most part, you know, we've been investing in real estate since 2017. When I bought my first property, uh, I was listening to all the podcasts, reading all the books that I can, and everybody was predicting a crash in the in the near future. And that just never happened. And here we are six years later, and uh, people are still speculating that crash. And surely, you know, just like trying to predict your death, like with every day you don't die, the probability of you dying the next day is going to increase a little bit, right? And uh, I think the real estate investing market is the same. So a crash or correction, something is going to happen. But, you know, at this point, the people that have been waiting or predicting on that for six years, you have lost a significant amount of time and a significant amount of opportunity to build a real estate investing portfolio. You know, I think most places define a real estate correction as being by like 30% or more. Your down payment, most of the time, is going to be around 20, 25%. Even if you are able to get into deals with no money down, you're still looking at like a 75% loan to value as being what you can borrow against that property. So, you know, you're looking at all things even like uh, a 5% difference. You might be upside down in that property by 5%. Well, if it's on long-term debt where you have a loan that's 75% loan to value, then that's going to work itself out over the next couple of years. If you are, you know, making your mortgage payments and if you analyze the property on the front end for cash flow, if you're not speculating on appreciation. So one of the most common questions that everybody wants to know is, is it too late to invest in real estate or is it too early to invest in real estate? And when I think about this, especially in terms of like a long-term perspective of 30 years, which is what a lot of these loans are amortized to, uh, old Chinese proverb, I think comes to mind. That's what the internet says that it is. But uh, saying that the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. The second best time is today. I would say as soon as you can purchase your first property, so long as you analyze that property appropriately, you should buy that. I recently listened to a book by Howard Marks. I know I talked about this a lot and it was called The Most Important Thing. You should read that book. And one of the things that I really appreciate about that book is you know, he said, we make the best decisions we possibly can with all of the information that we currently have on hand. And really thinking through that and kind of allowing that to sink into my thought process, that gives me comfort. And hey, I'm analyzing this property today. Uh, of all of the options available to me, I think this is one of the best ones. I think if I can get this property for X amount of dollars, then it's a good deal. If we purchase this property for that amount, then it's going to cash flow this amount monthly, right? If you are doing that on every deal, let's say, you know, the market does correct. Well, even if the market corrects, you're still getting your cash flow. Hey, if you play your cards right, if you are in the real estate investing game long enough, then you are going to experience the appreciation, the principal pay down and the tax benefits of owning the real estate. Now, cash flow is a very small percentage of this, but the appreciation and the principal pay down, well, uh, next to buying right, those are the most important things. And both of those are really reliant on time. The more time that passes, the better off, the more of those two things you're going to experience. If you have the money to do so, if you have worked diligently, to uh, learn all that you can about how to analyze properties, about your market. If you are mildly comfortable with what the city has planned for itself, right? Is it attempting to attract new businesses? Are they working on their own infrastructure? If the city's putting money in themselves, if uh, all, if you can find things that support the future of the area that you're investing in, uh, if you're analyzing these properties appropriately, then you shouldn't wait. I mean, don't let these kind of macroeconomic indicators really uh, deter you from making the appropriate, the educated moves for your personal financial situation. Because in the event that everything crashes, right? Because you can really get 
you know, sucked into a lot of rabbit holes about the uncertainty of the future and about all of the things uh, in economics that we have to fear. And I've made a couple of videos about being, you know, kind of resilient in recessions. And, you know, I think the most important thing is if that's what you're trying to hedge against is realizing that uh, so much of this is out of your control. And so long as, you know, a government still exists that allows private businesses to meet the needs of its people, then you have opportunity to pivot and continue to provide value to the marketplace and get compensated accordingly. So make educated decisions, work, you know, diligently to gather some information and then pull the trigger once you're comfortable that you are in fact making a, a good deal. But don't wait. Don't sit around over speculating, over analyzing, you know, you could have all of the knowledge in the world, but if you never take any action, all of your knowledge is useless. I would say, don't wait to invest in real estate. It is not too late. All of the successful real estate investors that, that I have spoken to that are, you know, still investing in real estate from 2008. One of the only things that they say is they wish they bought more. And I was in a conversation recently with a guy that has a couple of hundred properties. And, you know, he said that a recession for real estate investors means that you should double down and you should ramp up your acquisitions, not that you should shy away. I would, uh, I would be very protective of the information that you put in your head. And I would make sure that on a daily basis, you are moving the needle forward on your personal financial life. Thanks for watching that clip. I thought that was a good question. And I think you can ask good questions too. Join us every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a live stream Q&A where we answer plenty of questions just like this one. In the meantime, consider subscribing to the channel if you want more of this content. And if you want to increase your deal flow, analyze properties better, and help me feed my family, click the link below for a free seven-day trial of PropStream.